Yes, even the US dollar came from the Czech Republic. Huh? It's hard to breathe, but that's all right. Hush. Yo, my beautiful people. Yo, yo, guys. Dobri, dobri, then. It's your boy, again, Shady Shady One and Only. Today, guys, we are going to continue checking out Czech Republic. Today, we're going to check out famous things uh, created by Czech Republic or famous Czech things. So, things you didn't know that came from Czech Republic or Czechia. So, without some too much, guys, we are going to go straight to action and have fun with this one. But make sure you smash like, subscribe, give me some love. Let's do this one. Let's go. So I'm going to subscribe to Dream Prague. I'm going to like this. Let's go. When you think of Czech Republic and things that are from Czech Republic, mm -hmm. you probably think of yeah. the Instagram famous <laughs> Trdelnik or the goulash that your grandmother found in a Czech recipe book. And okay. you'd be wrong. Neither of those are actually Czech. Okay. But in this video, I want to talk about some things that were invented or discovered in the Czech Republic. Let's go. Okay, so I'm not going to lie. I do not know much about Czech Republic. I just know it was Czechoslovakia, and I know they call them Czechia, and I checked out some, you know, Prague. Uh, I know Brno. I check a few things, you know, from Czech Republic. And I know Pesis Liska, Jem, Japoska. I know a bit, you know, like, not much. So today, my brain is going to get bigger. Big. <laughs> Soft contact lenses were invented by a Czech. Yep, this little miracle was invented by a Czech. Otto Victorly. Victorly? They don't pronounce W, so I'm thinking it's Victorly. Otto Victorly. In the late 1950s. He discovered and patented a hydrogel material that could take 40% of water into the, into the material. Before that, they were using hard, tough, rigid contact lenses. Not really comfortable. And he created the first pair on Christmas Day on his kitchen table. He used a transformer from a bell, he used a bicycle dynamo, and he used a construction toy that was from a toy company, a Czech toy company, Merker, to build this very rudimentary uh, device to wow. manufacture these soft hydrogel contacts. Talk about ingenuity. <laughs> Talk about ingenuity. You guys created the, uh, the contact lens. I mean, like, the contact lens are comfortable in the eyes, like... Wow, okay, okay, okay. And his soft contacts are now prescribed to over 90% of contact wearers in the world. Wow. Fun fact, Czechs use the same word for contacts as they do for lentils, chočky. And so his machine was called the chočky stroj. Interesting. <laughs> they use the same word for lentils. Do you guys love lentils that much? <laughs> like, we love lentils, so we are going to call the contactless uh, chuck chucky. Wow, okay. Chuckini. Yeah, very interesting. All right, interesting. Not going to lie. All right. Czech Republic. We give that to you. We give that to you. Number two, the net bag. You've seen them on your favorite influencer's arm on Instagram, mm -hmm. but these net bags did not originate in a Brooklyn farmer's market or on the streets of Paris. Not everything cool comes from France. They were in fact invented in the 1920s by a Czech man named Laurel Kirchel. Now Kirchel had learned how to weave at a very young age. He came from a- Wait, 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 wait. How do you pronounce this Kirchel? Kirchel. Kurchel. Kurchel. The name is Kurchel. Interesting. Girl, Kurchel. Now, Kurchel had learned how to weave at a very young age. He came from mm. a poor family. His mother was a servant, and he helped her weave hair nets and sell them to help feed their family. Then, oh. after he came back from World War I, he opened up a hair net factory and would manufacture those. But then, in the mid-20s, hairstyles started to go shorter, so there was less of a need for hair nets, and the Japanese also started manufacturing hair nets and infiltrating the market. Mm. And so he was at a at a crossroads, what to do with his business. Mm. And so one night he decided to add handles to his hairnet and the idea for a net bag was born. Fortunately, he started shipping his bags all over the world, but unfortunately, he didn't patent the design, so it was quickly copied, and, and so he couldn't maintain a monopoly on the design. Aww. The net bag was really popular during communist time, and I think it kind of connotes the Czech babichka or the Czech grandmother to Czechs. 
What replaced the net bag's popularity was when grocery stores started giving single-use plastic bags away to shoppers. So only now have they started to come back into fashion with the EU now forbidding single-use plastic bags to be given away for free. And you see these net bags all over the streets. Now the Czech word for these net bags are sitjovka. Sit, 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 sit is network. Sitkovka. Like, basically a network. Sitovka. So sitovka, sitov, sit, sitovka, <laughs> there's a soft T. Sitovka. Oh my dude, it's like, she reminds me of me. Sitovka. Sitovka. Anyway, this is the word for the Czech bags, and there's a company that makes them now. It's called Česká Sitovka, and you can get them at CZ. Hmm. And the goal of this company was to sort of bring back the net bag, and they also source their labor from people who need jobs, um, people who are older, or maybe there's some um, something prohibiting them from getting a different type of job. So this is a really good company to support. And I'll put the link below. Okay, clap number two. Well done. Never knew this about Czech Republic. Yeah, but I knew of those bags. Of course, you've used those bags. And imagine that though, imagine that, like, wow. Like, so that's why it's good for people to know the history of the things that they use. The contact lens, uh, the contact lens is used by 90% of the world as well. Crazy. Yes, even the US dollar came from the Czech Republic. Huh? But we don't take dollars, so don't bring them. Yes, the origins of the US dollar trace all the way back to a small mining town of Yakimov. Come on, the US dollar. The US dollar. What are you talking about? The US, US dollar. <laughs> Look, this better not be a lie. On the Czech German border in the year 1520. So in the 15 teens, uh, lots of silver was discovered in this town. And back then, Europe was just a collection of small city-states. They weren't nation-states. And they had no sort of uh, currency for trade. They traded in metal, but they didn't have like a standard currency. So in this town, there was a count named Hieronymus Schlick. That's a name. And he actually was one that named the town after St. Jacob, Jesus' grandfather, who was the patron saint of miners. And he decided to manufacture his own currency. So he developed the Talar, or the Tolar, depending on how you pronounce it. On the front of the coin, he put St. Jacob, because of the town's name, and on the back, he put the Bohemian Lion. And he ended up minting more coins than had ever been minted in the world. Hmm. So this town is obviously growing, and in 1533, this became the biggest town in what is now modern Czech Republic, after Prague. It had 8,000 miners there, and they had ended up coining over 12 million tolars. And these tolars soon were traded and spread all through Europe. A few decades later, the Holy Roman Emperor decided to use the tolar as its own standardized currency. And so for 300 years, this currency was spreading all over the world, and different states would model their own currency after the tolar. And they adapted the name tolar to their own language. So in Italy, it was the talero. In Denmark, it was the dollar. And in French, it was the jucondel, because, you know, the French. It even made That's it as far as Africa and the Middle East, and it was used in India up until the last century. In Romania and Bulgaria, they instead called it the lion because of the lion on the back, so they called it the lev or the lu. And the Dutch called it the lion dollar. Oh, that's... please correct me if you're Dutch. The, the lewin dollar. Basically, the lion dollar. And as we know, the Dutch went to the New World and spread their currency throughout the 13 colonies. The English speakers in the New World started referring to this currency as the dollar and made it the official currency of the new country in 1792. So mm. the origins of the US dollar came from the Czech Republic. But we mm. don't want your dollars. Crowns only. Maybe euros. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Who would have thought that? Who would have thought that? No, I'm going to search this up. Are you serious? The Czech Republic gave the world a dollar. Wow. Its ancestors are the famous Jachimov Thalers. Thanks to their quality, our original coins became the first to be traded in bulk. Who would have thought that in a small country like ours, a name for a, con for a currency used all over the planet would emerge? 
Wow. The next one is blood. Serologist and neurologist Jan Jansky invented blood. Well, he discovered blood. Okay, he discovered that there were classifications for blood, and he put them into numbers one, two, three, and four, which now correspond to A, B, A, B, and O. Jan Jansky studied medicine at Charles University here in Prague. Go Lions! Do we have a mascot? We need to get on that. After working as a doctor on the front lines in World War One, Czech Republic discovered the blood groups. The blood groups. University here in Prague. Go Lions! Do we have a mascot? We need to get on that. After working as a doctor on the front lines in World War One, he came back to the Czech Republic and he focused his career trying to find the link between blood clotting and mental illness. There wasn't one. And during this time, he came up with the classification for blood into the four types. But he wasn't recognized for this discovery within his lifetime. In 1921, the year of his death, the American Medical Association finally acknowledged his leadership in this field over an Austrian doctor who had only come up with three instead of four classifications. Mm. Go Lions! Koska Kukru. The sugar cube was invented in the Czech Republic. <laughs> Jakub Christoph Rod was the manager of a sugar factory in Dalčice. In 1843, his wife Juliana cut herself while trying to hack a commercial loaf of sugar into pieces small enough to use <gasps> in the kitchen. So Jakub invented the process and the machinery of cutting sugar into cubes for personal use. Now we never have to guess about the exact right amount to put in our tea. Notably, Jakub was the father of 16 children, which I feel like should go on his wife's Wikipedia page. 16! Wow! <laughs> oh my days. Even the sugars that we use, the cubed sugars. Check! Wait, wait, wait. How many more things are there about Czech Republic that I do not know? Let me know now. When you hear the word bohemian, you probably think of artists and writers who live freely in a Parisian loft, experimenting with drugs, yes. hanging <laughs> macrame plants from their big windows, and definitely not getting jobs. But you would be wrong. Again with the French? Bohemia is actually a part of the Czech Republic, along with Moravia and Silesia. These are sort of like states, and Prague is in Bohemia. So how did we get this image of this sort of vagabond from the word bohemian? United Kingdom. Okay, France does have something to do with it. In the 1850s, people started showing up in France in caravans and they weren't respecting sort of the normal culture. They were not getting jobs, they were living freely, etc. Now these were actually the Roma. That's the population that people think came from India um, that is pejoratively referred to as the gypsies. Mm. The French thought those were people from Bohemia. They thought they were Czechs because they'd essentially stopped through Bohemia along the way. And people said, where'd you come from? And they said, Bohemia. And in the oh. 1890s, um, the Bohemians became famous for this style that we know and their irreverence for society. It was sort of a reaction to the bourgeoisie culture of the times. Again, still not the Czechs. Pretty soon, all the kids wanted to be Bohemians, but those Bohemians, they didn't, they didn't want to be Czech. <laughs> I guess the Bohemians would fall into the Tridilnik category of not Czech. So the Czechs really have nothing to do with this one. It was just a case of mistaken identity. Okay. Yeah, I know. And the last thing that came from Czech culture, which oddly is one of the first things that Czechs tell you when you arrive, is that a Czech invented robots. Not the actual robot, just the word. A Czech invented the word robot. It comes from the word robota, which is a common Slavic word for forced labor. 
Mm. And it used to describe the laborers in the field during feudal times. Mm. So when Karl Chopek was writing his famous play R.U.R. in the 1920s, he was looking for a word to describe this fictional humanoid body that didn't have a soul. Mm. And it actually wasn't him that came up with the word robot. His it wife. was his brother, who's also oh. famous. Karl Chopek had been on a tram in Prague and he'd come in from the suburbs and he was on this tram and everyone was smushed together and there were so many people on their dreary faces and they were even like sort of pushed to the steps to stand and he noted how they all just looked like drones with no souls and that this was what the industrialized economy was doing to people. Mm. And this is what inspired him to write his famous play, R.U.R., Rossum's Universal Robots. And he was naming the characters quite literally, but he had to come up with a word for the, essentially the laborer. And he was gonna call them like labori. And he lived with his brother, Yosef, here in Malastrana. And Yosef was an artist. And he asked Yosef, um, I don't know what to call these laborers. Just call it a robot. Yeshte Yedna? A robot, Carl. A robot. And that does it for today. There's a lot more for you to explore when you come to the Czech Republic, other than things that aren't even from here. So if you're interested in hearing more tales of an American's experience in mm. Prague, click subscribe and give this video a like. Uvidíme se příští týden. Ahoj! Ahoj! Ahoy, ahoy. I am not gonna lie, this video blew my mind, like it blew my mind. Things that I never knew. I had zero idea about. I only heard about the word robot so like uh, last week and then about the lenses as well, the eye, the, the contact lens. Otherwise, that is it. Wow. Okay, Czech Republic, that's quite a lot about you, you know, quite a lot. Not just uh, the beautiful Prague where people go, have a good time, enjoy a lawless country. They said the country of atheists, even though they're Christians, but they're kind of atheists. And, uh, you know, so many, so many beautiful things to see, you know, sights and that, you know, the tourism there is amazing. Things are cheap. Life is beautiful. The people are mm, pretty women, uh, amazing. I don't know, maybe friendly guys. I don't know. And food. Yeah, I've seen your food. I've seen your food. It's something that, you know, it's, it looks tantalizing. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, but it's really good to, you know, learn a bit about Czech Republic. You know, that is me. I always like to learn about a country before I venture into visiting, basically. Yeah, but I enjoyed this video, guys. I hope you did as I did. All right, guys, and I hope you guys learned something as well. I'm going to catch you in the next video. Peace. Shining my way, you are me. Oh, I love you more than words can say. You are me. Oh, you are the light that shines in my way.